Thinking about leaving your soul sucking nine to five job, one of the biggest struggles I see people, especially as women, face is the idea of having that safety nest, that enticing perks and benefits, and listening to that head trash of what will people think if I leave. I totally get it and I've been where you are. That's why I created a free guide to help you if you're thinking about putting in that notice. It's called Unlocking Your Exit Plan. Discover five things you need to do before leaving your nine to five. This guide is filled with worksheets and steps so you will have handholding along the way you can download your copy in the link in the show notes and again it's totally free now back to today's episode hey there let's face it today's internet world is so saturated and everyone is fighting for that number one spot to be visible it is no longer about running ads and having thousands of people on your email list it is about building relationships and networking with others to grow your business and become visible Hi, my name is Candice. I'm a podcast launch strategist and I help service-based business owners develop and deliver their message to the world by using platforms like podcasting and bringing valuable content to those who need to hear what they have to say. Welcome to the Hello C.S. Dorsey podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Hello C.S. Dorsey podcast. I have Christine and Roberts here with me on today. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. Awesome. So tell everyone who you are and what you do. Yes. So my name is Christine. I have the M in there just for um, my website. So Christine M. Roberts, and I am a life success coach. I work with women to pour belief into them and inspire them to change their mindset so they can make their personal goals a reality. And, um, you know, I've worked in the personal development world in leadership consulting with John Maxwell and also with Disney in their advisory group, working with companies on culture, employee engagement, quality service, and how they create the wow. So I've just been a huge um, student of humans, uh, people, myself, student of me. And and I figure if I've got things going on, uh, I'm not unique. Everybody else does too. So I love inspiring women and pouring belief into other women to believe that whatever they want to accomplish is possible. I love it. So what was the inspiration behind starting your business? So, yeah. So, you know, I grew up in a really dysfunctional environment, which I am thankful for, you know, um, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. I grew up with, uh, alcoholism. My dad was an alcoholic and witnessed domestic violence was, uh, you know, sexually abused as a child. So I'm a victor of that. And when I was a kid, um, I remember being 10 years old and, and living, we lived in a house that was, um, had been built in 1810 and it had been empty for a while. So it was really kind of a broken down house. And, um, my dad, I remember one time he was pulling in, in his car with a case of beer and my mom was leaving to go to bingo. And, you know, it's just like, I remember being 10 years old and thinking this is not going to be my life. And it's so interesting because it is, it was such a vivid thing. And I feel like God was just speaking to me at that time. And so in my life, um, you know, I have just, like I I mentioned before, I've just been a student of personal development because as I got older, I just realized that all of those things that happened, I had to address them and figure out, you know, how to fix me. And that kind of tied into my business. So, you know, I got into sales and I just, uh, you know, started listening to all sorts of, you know, Tony Robbins and Dennis Waitley and Dr. Vincent Peel and Zig Ziglar and all that kind of stuff. And I just loved it. I just love trying to understand us as humans and why we do what we do. And, you know, always looking at myself and saying, you know, what's my deal? You know, like when I start doing things that, you know, maybe you're self-sabotaging or whatever it is, but it's always about looking at myself. And, um, and I just feel like what I'm doing now, it was placed on my heart years ago. And, um, I have, I have like journals where I just always had this passion about raising awareness to our thinking, because what we think about really determines our whole life and being intentional about what we feed our minds. Right. So, you know, 
you say, if you feed your body healthy food, you'll have a healthy body. It goes the same for our thinking. When we feed our minds healthy messaging, we'll have healthy thoughts. And there's, you know, the saying, belief drives behavior. Belief drives behavior. So what do you believe? What you believe comes from what you, what you feed your mind. And when you, what you believe drives how you think and how you think drives how you feel and how you feel drives how you act and ultimately the results in your life. And so I've just been passionate about that for, for years. And so that's kind of a long answer to your question, but, um, yeah, it's just been on my heart for many years. I love it so much. Um, I, I too, um, grew up in a kind of not so healthy, you know, um, childhood, um, but my mom, she, I love her so much. She did the best she could. Um, Mm -hmm. but when I was 10 years old, yes, (laughs) same way, same thing, you know, my is my escape was always music and what I used to do is I used to write music I used to write my own lyrics and oh my gosh I I, when I was a kid I wanted to be a songwriter and listen (laughs) hey we still can do that I I'm I got this thing about going to Nashville so yeah so anyhow you so you would write music when you were 10 years old Yes, yeah, so when I was 10, I write uh, lyrics. Um, I did that for a long time, like up until I was like maybe 14 years old. Yeah. Um, I did that and I would go to the library because, you know, we didn't have the internet back then. So I would go to the library and I would get books on how to write lyrics and song lyrics and everything. Mm-hmm. And I did that and I would listen to the music that I was listening to. We will handwrite the actual lyrics and copy it and try to learn and memorize it. And that's my whole childhood. That's what I learned how to do. I want to be a famous singer and I want to design clothes <laughs> like um, <laughs> Selena, the singer. So yes, yeah, yes. I did. I wanted to do that. And it's so funny you mentioned that. I was like, oh my gosh, I did. I was doing the same thing. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Hey, you never know, Candice. Maybe we were meant to like sync up and like, in, in another season have, you know, go write some songs. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. And I think about the technology now and I'm getting off subject, but I just love talking about this stuff. <laughs> I think about the technology now and I'm like, what I would do to have the technology now yeah. back then, because when I got my first computer, I would email like record companies and you know find different labels get their address try to send them things you know like a letter hey you know I want to work for you guys and different things like that so I was a go-getter I was you are still a go-getter girl (laughs) oh my gosh it comes and goes you know you're in California I'm in Atlanta you can come here we'll road trip it up to like you know some of these places well I say Nashville because I know that they're even though it's country music predominantly there's just tons of music people up there it is you know it is um so hey you never know what the future holds I know for that I know (laughs) (laughs) oh I guess I could talk about this for days I know Uh, (laughs) so um let's talk about your hello moment when was that hello moment for you in your business whether it was while you were in your business or before you started Yeah. So again, I've had it on my heart for a long time. And I know one of the things we were going to talk about is like, you know, our, you know, jobs and all that kind of thing. So, um, so I mentioned that I worked, you know, I was in sales and I just loved learning, you know, I'm a big learner and I would always listen to all these things. I'm into psychology and quantum physics and, you know, human behavior and just all these things. I've been immersed in this type of stuff, culture and you know, about companies and why, you know, how do you create a great culture? But I was in sales. And so um, a number of years ago, I went, it was about 10 years, actually, no, it was about 12 years ago. um, I was traveling out in Las Vegas in California. And my girlfriend who lives in San Diego was going to Zappos, which I don't know if you're familiar with Zappos, but they, it's a big company that they online, they sell shoes. 
but they went from like zero to, to a billion dollars in a very short time. And their whole thing is about their culture. And Tony Shea was their um, CEO, young guy. And he wrote a book called Happiness, the Pursuit of Profits and Passion. And I went on a tour of Zappos and it was like their culture in their organization was just unbelievable. People loved working there. Like they would pay you to leave. Like if you did not fit the culture, they would pay you to leave. And like people didn't leave. And, and so, um, when I was there, I was so fascinated with that. And I went back to the company that I was working for at the time. And I did a whole presentation to our executive team. I was working for a finance company. I handled the Southeast region and um, I did a present, I got with our executives because I would hear about, I worked remote, like out of my home office in Atlanta and the headquarters was in uh, Jacksonville and there was like 600 people at the headquarters. And I would deal with all different people in different departments. And so I kind of had this, this view of the organization from a different perspective. You know, I wasn't there, but I saw all the, dis, you know, like the different challenges within the organization, cultural issues. And so I did a presentation to the executive team that because of what I learned at Zappos and from my reading and, and all that. And, um, and so then what happened is some things changed and I ended up like, I ended up leaving that company and I ended up going to work. I met the president of the John Maxwell company and he and I were talking and he said to me after, you know, I was sharing my story and we were talking about just, you know, leadership and companies and so forth. And he said to me, if we ever had a position available, would you be interested? And I was like, as a leadership consultant. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys are my people, you know, like it's all personal development stuff. And so I ended up going to work there and I was there for four years. And I think I mentioned to you earlier in 2016, I, our family, it's kind of like we had everything like on paper. We had everything. We had the big house, the fancy cars, you know, all the material things. But my kids at the time were 10 and 12. And it was in the, this seed had been planted for this, you know, I feel like God planted this seed a couple years previously. I met people that had done this, but we ended up selling our house, our cars, gave away most of our stuff. And we bought a 38 foot RV and a Jeep and we traveled America for a year. And, um, I did that working remote as a leadership consultant and my husband worked for Cisco systems. And we, our kids did the K-12 Georgia Cyber Academy and it was amazing. And, you know, like we actually were cast on a TV show called Going RV. And so any of you, any listeners out there that if you want to know about traveling America in an RV, you let me know. Cause we could tell you like a lot of stuff. I mean, there was, it was awesome, but I, it, with an RV, they say, if you get an RV or on a, or a boat, you should have a toolkit and a sense of humor. And, um, cause lots of stuff happens, like, you know, things break in and it, I could just tell you so many stories. Um, anyhow, we ended up back in Atlanta, back in our same neighborhood because my kids knew this neighborhood and all that. And so then an opportunity came up for Disney in their advisory group where, um, the, I was going to be handling the Southeast and it was all about culture. So it was like, you know, how Disney creates the magic and working with companies to help apply the Disney principles in their business. And so it was awesome. I loved it. And it was a great job. Although it's interesting on my heart, there's just been this whole thing of doing my own thing. Like, but I've had the golden handcuffs, you know, it was like, I I've got these great jobs and make great money. And I just didn't have the guts, you know, to go do my own thing. Well, a year ago, October, there was a reorg and there was un underutilized uh, resources out of Orlando and all that. They eliminated a bunch of positions and mine was one of them. And I tell you, I was devastated because I loved working for Disney. I mean, I got to do all sorts of VIP stuff and stay at the Floridian. I mean, I, I get so many perks and it was just fun, you know, but I still, it's interesting because my heart wasn't, it was fun but my heart wasn't really in it. 
And then when I got laid off, and I mean, I had some big things working with some very large companies and it didn't make sense to me. Like it was one of those things where I'm going, what is going on? This doesn't make sense. However, I had been praying this prayer, like at church, we had this um, sermon and like the Sunday before this happened, the, the, you know, my lemon, my position get eliminated. So the prayer was, I offer you God, my dreams and plans do to me, whatever seems good to you. I acknowledge your right to rule your will be done in me. And I was praying this for like four days. And then I get, I get, you know, my positions eliminated and I really felt bad. So for anybody who's out there that, you know, you've lost your job, you've gotten laid off. It's like, I allowed myself to just go and really, I was in a funk. Like I, it killed my ego. I thought I've never, I've always been like a top producer. Like how could they let me go? And I allowed myself, I wrote out all of the faults, like all the lies that I was telling myself. Like I wrote out what I bring to the table. And then I wrote out all the lies that I started telling myself. And then I wrote out the, um, the truth, you know, like what the lies were. And then I wrote the truth. Like, you know, I, I wrote some things like to start my own company. I was like, you know, people, am I going to have credibility? And then it's like, come on you've been like doing all this stuff for years. You've got this track record. So I, you know, and I think that, you know, any, anybody who's listening to this, I just want you to, to really think about, you can tell yourself so many lies and they're, you know, they're not true. You have to just stop yourself. And this is where the whole thing about our mindset comes in and what we think, because everything comes down to our thinking. And so when we're having those conversations with ourselves where we're talking to ourselves and saying things that are not, you know, that are not encouraging to, to your spirit. Um, I always say, treat yourself as a cherished friend. And, um, and so, you know, I allowed myself to just really get into a funk for like, I, it was really not that long. Cause I'm always one of these people that I say, you know what, there's a reason for this. Allow myself to feel it, journal it, go drive around, scream, have a, you know, have a temper tantrum because my, I can't have a temper tantrum at home because my dog starts freaking out. And then I'm like, come on, I just want to cry. And like the dog's going crazy. So now I just do it in my car, like go on a road where nobody's around and I can just like, kind of have like, allow myself to cry, you know, and just feel it. Cause I think, I don't know, as a mom and, you know, I have a 14 and, and well, it's soon to be 15 and 17 year old it's like so many times you just got to always be holding it together. And sometimes you just, you need to let it go through you. And so I did that. And then I, I was like, this is my time because then I started going, all right, well, what's the lessons here? You know, what is the purpose of this? What's the opportunities here? Um, Because I think it's easy, you know, for anyone who's out there that's really struggling right now, it is so, I mean, it's easy to stay in a funk. I mean, especially with everything happening. So the intentionality of, of like really managing our thinking, it is so, so important. And I, I mean, it's so important. And so I do things like I seek out people that are doing big things and listen to them, like listening to your podcast (laughs) and, you know, listening to Ted talks of people like really don't allow the negative stuff in. Just don't do it. It's like garbage. It's toxic stuff into your mind. Cause everything that's out there is someone's bias. You know, like if, if there's a lot of, a lot of bad stuff out there that we're being downloaded as people. <laughs> and true. I mean, it's that really, you know, like for example, So at that time I said, all right, I'm starting my own thing and I'm going to do my coaching course. I filmed last, you know, like last um, February. And then I found tech people. It's like when you start seeking what you're looking for and asking the right questions, how can this happen? Who do I need to meet? It's amazing. All the opportunities that start opening up and the people that show up and, and it is like that shift 
And gratitude is so important of figuring out, even when times are bad, you always have something to be thankful for. And it can be, sometimes it can be tough to shift gears over to thinking that way because you can feel like everything's bad. But it's like this, this shift of finding what's good. That's true. That's true. Like for me, for a couple of weeks now, um, since I had the event, I didn't have my my podcast. So I only did like two interviews, I think, um, during that 90 day period that I was planning. Yeah. Um, but I did notice a, kind of a small boy. I was like, oh, I'm not talking to anyone. <laughs> and uh-huh. then when I started getting back in, you know, my podcasting and my schedule and everything. And uh, you're actually my first one since yeah since my event I'm like yay I'm back at home you just feel like so comfortable and so you know comforting getting back into you know talking to people and you know collaborating Mm -hmm. and networking because this is my this is my thing being at home I love talking to people (laughs) I know you know what it's like I'm with you because uh like I hired a marketing operations manager. Her name's Lauren. She's awesome. And then I've got a tech person named Marcy and she's incredible. And, um, Isabel, my graphic person. So I've, I've got different. And then there's Megan who does copywriting. She's actually in um, long beach. And it's like, I just feel so blessed and thankful for them. But sometimes they'll, you know, like there's things that you have to do, right? Like I got to get their 1099s and like, Oh yes. Like I, (laughs) like this, what we're doing right now is so fun to me. Like it's so fun to me. And some of this other stuff, I'm like, like May and Mars or uh, Lauren just sent me a thing. Christine, I need you to type out, I need you to send me the three takeaways from your course. And, um, I need them to be different, you know, like, and I've, I've already written all this stuff. I'm like, well, I don't know what she's talking about. Like I've already written all this stuff. And, um, and I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just anguishing over it or writing a bio or like some of these things. And, but this is like fun to me. Like, this is my jam talking to you and just mine too. (laughs) I love it so much. I really do. It's, it's, it, it's like, yes, everything is shut down. Everything is closed. The networking events isn't happening, but there's an alternative. Like this is the most fun thing, like being at home and being able to talk to people and network, get to know people. So I love it so much, even, you know, pre COVID and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, This has just been like so amazing to me and uh, podcasting has just been such a great blessing to just sit talking. You know, if I want (laughs) to drink my water, if I want to drink my coffee, I can do that and record and have a conversation. So it is so beautiful. Yeah. Well, you're good at it. So it's definitely, it's it's in your giftedness for sure. (laughs) You know, someone else said that too. Uh, One of my speakers from the event, she said the same thing and it's a, it's a growing experience. It really is like you know over the time and everything constantly doing interviews is is, I've gotten used to it now but you should have heard my first episode don't listen to it (laughs) oh my gosh hey well you know what when we were talking before we started recording it's like anyone who is an expert was once a beginner so it's like and and I think I just think that's such it's such a great um quote because you know again Anybody out there who's listening, who wants to do something new and you're scared because you're like, I'm not going to be good. No, you're not going to be good at it. But guess what? If you don't start, you'll never get good. So anything that you start, you got to give yourself grace and you got to say to yourself, you know what? I can't compare myself to someone who's been doing it for 80 episodes or a hundred or a thousand. Like you just got to do it. And it's, it's that whole thing. There's that feel the fear and do it anyway. And when you think about that, feel the fear and do it anyway. Like what you did with your, with your um, summit, yes. right? Yes. You could have easily put that off another year and had a great excuse like, oh, I'm not ready, but you I didn't. I almost was going to. <laughs> yeah, but you felt the fear I and did. you did it anyway. And, yes. and now the next time, it, it's like almost like the quicker that you start, the quicker you're going to get better. And I think a lot of times people will delay things because they're like, oh, I don't have enough information. I don't have this. No, go for it. 
if you're listening right now and you are thinking about doing something and you're, you're stopping yourself, I want you to know this is, this is not a coincidence that you're hearing this message that you right now push through, feel the fear, do it anyway. Even if it's, you know, we say it's about, per, it's about progress, not perfection. So, you know, live, and I've got this thing on my wall that you can't see if you're listening, but it says live by grace, not perfection. So giving yourself grace. Yes. Yes. You, you definitely have to. Um, when I initially, uh, was going to start my, my summit. And I thought about it. I was scared. I was terrified, but I made the jump without even thinking about it and bought the domain for it. And I said, Candace, you bought the domain for it already. You have to go through with it. And uh-huh. then I started seeking out speakers and I was like, you already told everybody now you have to do it. So <laughs> Is that kind of your, is that kind of your mechanism for doing things? Is you just tell them you're doing it? Yeah. Yeah, I have to. And it's the same way with things around the house. Like when my mom washed clothes and she folds them. And um, when I did have a basket where she put them in, they would just pile up. But I know myself and what I would do is in the morning time, I'll take that basket and I'll throw it on my bed. And then when I come home, the clothes will be there. I have to remove the clothes. So I have to put them up. Oh, I love it. Well, you know what? That's like, you know, when you think about, there's a guy named James Cleary wrote a book called Atomic Habits. Oh, And what he talks about is systems and processes, right? So it's like everything in life, if you want to create habits or you want to complete something, you've got to create systems and processes. So you're like, like you set yourself up and to do that so that you put it on your bed and you know, you're going to have to put those things away because you got to go to bed. Yeah. So that's like a, a type of system. And I, that's brilliant. And that's the, the type of thing, like people who want to, you know, if they want to exercise in the morning, it's like there, you hear people like wearing their workout clothes to bed, or they have them laid out the night before, or, you know, it's, it's doing all those little things to create those systems and processes for whatever it is you want to accomplish. And, um, so yeah, like you totally do that. I do, I do that too. You know, I just have my, cause a lot of times it's not about motivation. Like sometimes it's that discipline Yes. and, and like just setting up those systems and then it becomes a habit. And then when it becomes a habit, you don't really think about it. Like you just do it. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And that's my system for getting myself to do stuff. So I have to, I have to force myself to do it. So I have to, it's either have to be laid out in front of me, Uh or I have to tell people this is what I'm doing. And then I'm like, oh goodness, I have to go through (laughs) it because I've already told everybody they're expecting it. You know, I've had situations where, you know, I've, you know, done Facebook live, said I'm going to go live and then actually something happened. I can't go live. Um, but yeah, I have to do that to myself in order for me to do it because if I don't set myself up, you know, actually set myself up, (laughs) then it won't get done. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know. Cause I, it's like, I, for me, and I think for, I'm sure anybody listening, because I'm sure your listeners are, are like-minded people. And it's like, I always tell my kids, all you have is your word at the yes. end of the day, when you're stripped of everything, all the material stuff, all you have is your word and, you know, having integrity and having your word, like that's it. That's all you got. So I'm just like, if I say I'm going to do something, like I've told customers, I said, if I tell you I'm going to do something and I don't do it, hopefully I'm only in the hospital because I am a person of my word. And so you're right. Like when you, when you do that, then you feel like I have to do yes. what I said. And, um, so I think that's good that it, that's like what they say, you know, as far as accomplishing goals, you know, one of the components of, of, you know, success in accomplishing goals is accountability. Yes. Like you got to be accountable to somebody or something. Cause I mean, as disciplined as a person can be, sometimes you need that, you know, you need that other, you need somebody that you're, you've told to hold you more accountable. 
I agree. Yeah. And I have to tell everyone <laughs> so that I'll do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So uh, let's talk about your growth method. Could you tell everyone a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. So, so the grow method is like an overarching, um, methodology for really the premise of all my coaching courses and coaching philosophy. So the G stands for, uh, gratitude. You know, we talked about that a few minutes ago and, and gratitude ties into the whole thing about our thinking, because when we shift our thinking and focus on what we're grateful for, it's, it's like a complete different energy happens. And so that's the premise of, you know, of the whole thing of our thoughts, like managing our thoughts. And, um, the R, the R is for reflect and create. And so in, in my coaching, like I have an online coaching course called mindset reset, um, coaching course, and it's, it's an online course. And then there's also live trainings with it, but reflect and create is about looking back at what we've accomplished. You know, what were, what were pivotal points in our lives? What was it that brought us joy? Like you, you were just talking about writing songs. Um, it's like when we reflect in our life, because a lot of times we can be moving so fast in our life, you know, in our culture today, especially with technology, like we don't ever really stop and think, you know, how often do we just ponder and just think about things? We're, we're constantly engaged with something. So this is about really intentionally reflecting on, you know, where we've been, what we've done, what's brought us joy, because there's evidence there of what we, what we want to do to create our future. So it's again, gratitude, reflect and create the O is for ongoing. And so in our lives, we are in constant, you know, there's that saying, unless you're moving forward, you're going backwards. You know, as human beings, really, we want to be better today than we were yesterday. So becoming our best selves is an ongoing process. You know, I have um, on my, you know, if, if you go to my website, christinemroberts.com, we have a self-discovery assessment that people can do or self-discovery activity. And it's, it's a wheel that has all the different categories in our life. And so, you know, for example, you know, purpose, financial, spiritual, health and wellness, um, relationships. And so it's, it's a way to assess these different categories. And it's like, it's always an ebb and a flow. You know, we may be doing great in, in, in a number of areas, but maybe there's an area that we need to improve on. Maybe, you know, I've been married, my, my husband, and I've been together for 25 years. This year, I'm actually reading a book. I've, I've got like 12 books that I just, um, that I just, you know, I'm doing my goals for 2021. One of the books is called How to Improve Your Marriage Without Talking. And it's like kind of investing more, like there's going to be more investment in my marriage this year and my business. And just, you know, like, so all of the different categories, it's, it's like, you can't be perfect in everything. So it's, Maybe you're content. Maybe physically you feel content. Like, you know what? I exercise three days a week. I feel like I'm at a healthy weight. You know, I'm good in that area. I don't need to like put a lot of focus, you know, with huge goals. I'm, I'm happy there. But, you know, in this area, I want to grow more. So it's, it's constantly evaluating the different categories in our lives and say, what's going well and what do we want to improve on? And, and so, you know, again, ongoing. And then the W stands for wealth. And when I say wealth, what I mean is wealth and abundance in every way. So, you know, when we think about our, you know, gratitude in our thoughts, um, reflecting in our life, helping to understand ourselves better and creating our best life, ongoing, continually growing and learning and improving, ultimately we will have wealth and abundance in all areas with that overarching methodology. I love it. So gratitude. So G is for gratitude. Mm -hmm. R is for reflect and create. Mm -hmm. O is for ongoing. Is it ongoing? And then mm -hmm. W is for wealth in abundance. Yep. I love it. 
I love it so much. I'm going to add this in the show notes. This is beautiful. And so let's talk about um, your mindset quiz that you have on your website. Yes. So again, that's like the premise of everything. And, um, you know, as, as a Christian, it's even if you're not a Christian, all of these things really are fundamentals, you know, Philippians four, eight is all about the idea of what we take into our minds. And it's all about meditating on goodness and truth and beauty. And so um, the mindset quiz is, it's a really fun quiz because what it does is kind of raise awareness to where you are. So there's, there's 10 questions. So it's really very easy and quick. And, um, and it gives you kind of a baseline of, of where you are with your mindset today. And then we have a video that goes along with it that um, really walks you through kind of how to think about things and, you know, what's the next step. And we offer a Kickstarter session that is all about, you know, raising awareness to thought and how do we shift our mindset? Because our mindset will drive improving our relationships. It, it helps in our financial life. It helps in our health and how we think about our, our health mentally and physically and spiritually. So all of these things all drive all these other results in our life. So, you know, I would love for everybody to come and check it out. They're, they're fun little activities and resources um, that can just give you some insight on yourself. Awesome. We're going to link that up in the show notes. So where can everyone find you? Yes. So Christine M, M for Marie, roberts.com. So C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-M-R-O-B-E-R-T-S.com. Also on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and all that stuff. So just uh, check me out. I think it's Christine M. Roberts 10 on Facebook and Instagram. And then, um, oh gosh, on LinkedIn. I think if you just look up Christine M. Roberts, uh, life coach, you'll find me. Okay. No worries. We're going to link it up in the show notes. <laughs> Excellent. Thank yeah. You. I'll be right there for everyone to click. <laughs> well, I thank you so much, Christine, for coming on the show today. It was really a pleasure to have you on. Oh, such my pleasure, Candice. Thank you so much and best of luck and God bless everybody out there listening. Awesome.